Okay. Go. All right, guys. Hold on. Let me see. All right. Can you guys hear me? Let me see how I can get. See, every time I do this off my phone. Hold on. Um. Okay, live chat. There we go. I, I don't want this. Go down. Okay. All right. Well, it looks like nobody's in here, so I will wait for people to arrive. Okay, good. All right, guys. Shoot. All right. Um. So I have a couple things to do. Um, I'm going to wait for a couple of you guys. Can somebody, once you guys come in, can somebody just hit the chat? Because I'm not used to streaming off my phone. Someone just say something. I just want to see how it comes up in my phone. Um, let's see. There's only one person in here. I wonder if it's because, did it not notify? There's two people in here. I guess, I wonder if it's like not notifying people. That's like been going on too. When it notifies people, it'll be a whole bunch of people in at once. But if anybody who's in here can please just say something in the chat. I just need to see if it's coming. How to? Okay, good. All right. Hey, Emily. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right. So that's how I'm going to be able to see the chat. So I just wanted to, um, I'm just trying to like think of other ways that I can like multitask doing some of this stuff. I have like a bunch of folding to do. So I figured I'd check in with you guys and just kind of like. I want to be able to check in periodically and just kind of see where we, where we are as a community. Just sort of see like what topics people have that, you know, they, they want to hear covered, that they want to talk about. Um, you know, I, I want to come up with, I was thinking of having some kind of like a call in where maybe I could, um, I don't know how I could do this, like straight it would have to be on my downstairs so oh the usually when i go live or i do videos you guys see me in my downstairs office let's see this is the first time i'm able to catch me live ah wait it went away um okay yeah yeah it's thanks thanks for coming and it's it's good to see you too i know this is a tough time for people but um I just had to fold clothes. Oh my God, you guys. And check this out. Look what my daughter did to her wall. It's like really bad. So I'm going to have to paint the wall. But um, is the audio okay? So I guess I, I was just watching, um, what is it? Uh, Graham Linens or Linen or whatever his last name is, I was just looking at his live and they were talking about the um, Will Thomas, AKA Leah Thomas stuff. Yeah, the magic eraser, I know, I actually have one. I gotta, do, like, does it work though? I should know this the amount of kids that I have. I haven't used it before, but I have some downstairs. I'm gonna try it or I'll just have to paint it. It probably needs to be painted anyway. Um, you know, and it, it was really interesting and they had, um, coach blade on, I guess she's a women's swimming coach. Um, you know, and she's a really, you know, outspoken critic of the whole Leah Thomas thing. And, you know, we were talking about that and just the fact that it's, it is in, institutionalized sex abuse of women. It's the sexual, you know, it's, um, school sanctioned institutionalized sex abuse of women uh you know there's been reports that women on the team have basically been threatened if they speak up that they'll lose their standing with the school that they could be kicked off the team i mean it, that that that's like institutionalized rape as far as i'm concerned that women are being forced to you know undress in front of a man in, in any other circumstance if a college said you must get undressed in front of the this man uh, it would be an uproar but because i guess he identifies as a woman and he's wearing to willing to wear a one piece suit bathing suit that then it's all good 
Um, it's not okay. I, I think these women are, are, you know, their civil rights are being violated. And of course, the ACLU doesn't care. Um, the, the ACLU has been very clear that they side with Will and um, the trans right agenda. So, um, God, I want the chat to stay up. Hey, guys. Yeah, thanks. If you hit the like, that'd be great. Um, but it's also whatever. Um, so... There's just so much that's like the one good thing about this and when people were talking about when um, Laurel Hubbard, the Olympic power weightlifter, hit the scene, the one benefit of it, and it's funny because I actually read there was like a um, pro-trans, some trans-friendly publication basically was like Laurel Hubbard is the, you know, the worst person that we could use to represent trans rights because it's she's just turning everybody off to the trans you know um to the trans rights movement da, 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 da. we should have chosen basically we should have chosen somebody more sympathetic because laurel hubbard who literally is a middle-aged balding man who you know this big he's your he literally when you think of like an incel like he, literally the memes of people when they draw the like guys at home in their mom's basement with like the glow of the computer on their face and like they always say it's like who's really behind these little um anime girls avatars and it's like some fat slob like middle-aged like loser with like you know like a ring of like balding hair that's like in a ponytail like he literally like if you made one of those memes come to life it would be laurel hubbard like so you know just but it's all so fucked up because then it's like, oh, but who's sympathetic then? So what? Sam Lux is somehow better and, and more lovely. Why? Because because they can pass and they seem more feminine and they're more beautiful. Again, because we're a looks-obsessed society. That somehow Sam Lux isn't a predator. Sam Lux is this, like, cutesy, like, real, you know, sympathetic character. But then somebody like Laurel Hubbard is like, oh, well, he's disgusting. Why? Because he's ugly and fat? Like, um... Oh, God, here's this person, huh? You really need to stay off my channel. Sorry. Um, like a creepy, creepy person. So, anyway, um, God, I don't like that the chat doesn't just stay up. It, like, pops up for a minute. Oh, shit, I didn't realize he was on there this whole time. Okay, the U Pen, the, um, so T. Oh, why Tehrani says those Penn women swimmers should just refuse to participate in mass, you know, and that's true. And I think, I think it was like Matt Walsh said this and it, and it frustrated me because he was like, you know, it's hard to feel bad for these women who are talking about their rights being abused when it's happening to them. But then like, you know, they're like, if they're not going to stand up for themselves and it's hard for me to feel sorry, I'm like, Matt, these women don't have power. A lot of these girls who are on the UPenn swim team busted their asses, who, who, who spent their entire undergrad careers fighting to get in. This is an elite school. This is an elite opportunity to, to, to put that on, to put themselves on the line like that and put themselves out there and risk the fact that maybe other people aren't going to have their back. You know, and to lose their spot on the UPenn swim team, or maybe, you know, the University of Pennsylvania itself, that's life altering. That that that's literally sacrifice. It's just it's it's you know, that that's really martyring yourself. And, and to put that level of pressure, what about what about the men? You know, and, and where and this is where I also get mad because it's like, oh, women aren't gonna stand up and say something. That's the point. It's hard for us to stand up to these people. The type of man, I read this really good meme that was like, I would rather undress in a group room full of men who don't try to force themselves into women's spaces, just regular men, than undress alone with one man who fights to get into vulnerable women's spaces because the sort of man who's going to make a big deal about violating the boundaries of other women is dangerous inherently. That's a predator. That, that's a huge red flag, you know, and that's true. And, and to put the kind of onus on, on these victims to after they've been institutionally threatened 
Um, no, and listen, I, and I totally agree. There's not an alternative by just go. So no, my, and my point is, isn't to go after you or your comment. I was more frustrated with the way that Matt Walsh said, cause I agree with you. I agree that there, you know, but at the same time, it not rather than just having this group of girls band together, like we need to create a buffer around them. You know, we need to put so much pressure where it's like if anything happens to these girls or their well-being or they're standing in the school, um, if you fuck with them at all for standing up with them, like then, then there's going to be real consequences to the endowment of the University of Pennsylvania because we're watching. You know, we need to make sure that we have their back. We need to make sure that, we, you know, we're also putting pressure. And it can't, this isn't a fight that women can just win alone. Okay, men really need to start getting mad. The fathers of these girls need to start getting mad. The fucking, you know, the brothers, the 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 husbands, you know. And I always think back to like, you know, the We Spa woman or, or so many of these women. Or what was the one woman outside of We Spa during the actual, um, what, when there was the protest and stuff after and they all surrounded her? Oh, God, I always watch that. And I'm like, if that were me, I would have been strapped and I would have like, I, I wish one of you would have come at me with a fucking skateboard. I fucking wish it was me because that that would have ended such a different way. And I'm dead serious. And it's like and it's so frustrating because this woman, it was this, you know, totally reasonable woman. And was surrounded by all these Antifa fucking losers. And listen, I'll show you guys pictures. I used to um, protest with the Northeast anti-fascists back in 2004. I, I was 16 or 17. It, I remember in October there was a neo-Nazi KKK NSM uh, neo-socialist uh, rally that happened at a big public park near my um, house. And they had gotten a permit to host a rally. So we all went and we like protested but like one of the things that i noticed early on was just the way that they protested there was like a man and a pregnant woman walking towards the uh rally and obviously they're affiliated but people were like jumping on them trying to push her and kick her and stuff and i was kind of like uh yeah i, I don't know that this is like the way that i don't want to be attacking pregnant women i don't this isn't we, we can make our point a different way so I know what their tactics are and it just, it infuriated me when I saw that, when they saw the way that they like surrounded her. So it, it's just, this can't just be, you know, women standing up and saying, you know, these, these abusive predatorial men need to get out of our spaces. Um, you know, everyone needs, this is everybody's business. This is everybody's fight. Um, pee, pee, we, we, you got it. And you know what? And women need to start like, whatever it takes like you know talk to your husbands talk to your boyfriends talk to your dads and, and put it on the line and say listen if this doesn't matter to you and if and if you're not you know also going to start to plug in and tune in then you you clearly don't care about me and you don't care about our daughters and you don't care about your mother and you don't care about my mom you don't care about my sister and you know it really makes me look at you twice about what sort of fucking man, sort of man that you are. Um, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Men won't join the fight until they're directly inconvenienced. Well, we need to inconvenience them. Okay, we really need to inconvenience them, and we really need to fucking you know just apply pressure. You know, no no fucking man should at this point get away with with taking a, a non stance on this. Um, but I totally agree. All right, I'm going to go read through some of this chat. Hey, Mac, how are you? Melanated Thinka, they should boycott. They absolutely should. Air, he is the one who needs to be stopped, and the men who lead the NCAA need to protect women's sports. And that's another thing, too, and I want to be really clear. I I'm also worried about how much um, these fucking people are allowing Will Thomas to be a scapegoat for all this. Let's be clear. He would not be in this position. He's just an opportunist and, and he's the kind of, you know, figurehead. He would not be in this position if it were not for people in institutionalized power empowering him to do it. We need to hold those people accountable. We need to hold the coaches accountable. We need to hold his parents accountable. We need to hold the school accountable. I don't want him to take the full fall for this and all of the people who made this happen, the fucking ace. CLU. I will never donate to them again. You have me fucked up, okay? Because I remember they had supported 
during, you know, there were some demonstrations and some girls that I went to um, uh, college with that I was friends with were arrested and they had covered all their legal defense aid. And so I, I, I've been like a long time donator of the ACLU. Never again, never again. They've made their position very clear. Um, so let's see. All right. It's so confused. Uh, let's see. It's so confusing to me how back in the day, if your child came to you and said, I hate my body and want to die, we would encourage them to get help. And now I say, oh, you were born in the wrong body. Yeah, exactly. Like, what the fuck does that mean? You're And, and it was, so which is it? It's, oh, you know, trans women have always been women. So a trans body is a woman's body. She just wants, you know, affirmation surgeries to like feel like, you know, how the rest of the world perceives women. It's like, what the fuck? It, it, it's all so circular. Um, I'm like, yeah, I'm so glad we're paying for this bullshit. <sighs> let's see. He is the one who needs to be stopped and the men who lead the, um, yes. Yeah, so let's see. I see that. Hey, Mac. Like now we actively encourage mothers to mutilate their children. And not only do we encourage and, um, and stunt them for life, or we say that they're bigots. This makes no sense to me. Exactly. And not only do we encourage the mothers, but we actively like, so we pressure them to a sense that like yeah, there's there's now okay even the the case of the guy who lost custody of his son over his refusal to support trans medicalization it not and even even what was it the um OJ the ogre guy up in Canada who led the whole um uh protest against the women's rape and crisis center to lose Canadian funding in Quebec. He even said, he said in Canadian law prioritizes the well-being of children over the wants of the parent. So he's basically like sending like, you know, uh, uh, a notice to all parents that listen at the end of the day, if you don't go with this, we're going to just take your kids. We're going to make you go with it. So you either go with it and get on board or you're really going to face some consequences. Uh, it's scary. So Vanessa Voki says we need to inconvenience the gender clinics by calling them and wasting their time. Absolutely. Call gender clinics. The same way that um, the pro-life movement spends every single day. I remember when I went to go get an IUD down at Planned Parenthood and even Planned Parenthood now I don't even fuck with because they're providing hormones. Um, you know, I, I constantly, it was always like, you know, there's another way. Don't kill your baby. And um, the same way that they're so dedicated and they bring their kids out there and hold up pictures. We need to be out there with blown up pictures of mutilated trans body parts young people, young children, you know, it, and let's let it be real. Cause I, again, we don't, all we see is when you search these terms, cause listen, I, I do a lot of, you know, I go through a lot of TikTok videos and I'll tell you at the very front, the very top, when you put in certain keywords, like, you know, trans surgeries, trans, it's always like the, the most beautiful, the most passing, you know, they're not showing the guy with the five o'clock shadow who looks like straight AGP. They're showing like the Sam Lux, you know, and it's like, oh, I feel great. Like all the boys like, oh, here's my beauty routine. And it's like, it's all cutesy. These kids aren't getting, this is not informed consent. Um, let's see. So, dun, 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 dun. indeed, the pen men should not swim. Yeah, the pen men should not swim to show solidarity to every single man. And I don't give a fuck who you are. Gay men should care. Gay men should care because this is infiltrating their community. Gay, all the rights that, that the LGB fought for to protect, you know, sexuality as an immutable uh trait are being eroded gay men should care straight men should care fathers should care every single father of a daughter or a son or a son should care because you know what little boys are also at risk they're at risk of falling prey to this this identity politics that hey maybe if their you know son is a little more gentle or maybe into some girl things um 
you know, or, or maybe he's homosexual, or maybe he's just more in, into traditionally girl things before you know he could be ending, ending up, you know, on, on some back alley hormones. Um, husbands should care. Husbands, if you, if you love your wife, I know, I know. Good, listen, and I know there's this whole argument, oh, men are trash. I know good fathers. I know good husbands. I know good, I know pe men who would never be okay with their wife feeling that uncomfortable, like at the wee spa. I know men who would fucking raise hell if it were their wife and daughter at the wee spa. You know, they need to tap in and we need to tap them in. Um, but again, again, but I think the fact is, like they said, you know, people aren't gonna, um, care until it, it directly impacts them and that's not necessarily like oh it's because they're pieces of shit that's just that's just the reality i mean there's so many things to care about and so many causes right now you know and this one's a hard one because a lot of men really have bought into the lie that supporting trans rights and supporting the trans agenda is supporting feminism that this is a, a piece of feminism so even men who do want to be allies and who do care about women and care about the needs of women they're being told unilaterally that the trans movement it, it is is now the most fundamental uh need a uh, uh, goal of feminism it is fully embedded within the feminist movement so they're like oh okay they think they're being supported right so we like it, we cannot fight this alone and we need to apply pressure and we need to get men involved and yeah, I think the UPenn, if the UPenn male swimmers were to stop uh, swimming in solidarity, because the fact of the matter is, is that male sports are, are really where a lot of the money comes in. And it sucks, and it's just the reality. And, you know, if they were to step up for once in their fucking lives, girlfriends, wives, you need to put pressure on these men. Uh, mothers, talk to your sons. Be like, yo, like if you're older, you have older sons. Be like... You know, you could have a daughter one day. This will affect her. And you know what? If you wait until you do have a daughter to start caring, the job is going to be much bigger to try to undo it. Let me catch up with the chat a little bit. Um, oh, my God. This fucking troll, yo, of this person that I know. Go away. Go away. How do I? Oh, hi, user from the channel. Okay, cool. Fucking weird as shit. Sorry, guys, that person has been, like, sexually harassing me for the past, like, two days. Um, let's see. Um, seems like, all right, so right now we actively encourage, okay, should not slim. So, I, yeah, I remember the video of a man either kicking or punching a female pro-life protester. Even if I disagree with a woman, I won't physically violent her unless she starts, yeah, I mean, that that's, that's not okay. Um, why are we letting men take titles like best woman Jeopardy player? Yeah, and, and let, let me, how many titles are we taking from men? Are, are, I'm sorry, when's the last time I saw a woman get man of the year? You know, oh, the first, actually now, you know what the only titles that now like the trans identified females are taking are ones away from gay men, you know, because God forbid we take away like the mainstream uh, heterosexual you know, macho man titles away. Never that. It's it's some uh, trans identified female won some competition for like you know, for gay men. Like whatever. So yeah, th those those they can have, right? Those let's let the girls have everything else. It's males are taking over. Um, you know, women's spaces, and we know why. We know why women aren't cleaning out men's sports. Hello, that's the point. We, if this, why, why are men, women not clamoring to go to men's prisons? Okay, there's, and I, in my county jail right now, there's a trans identified male housed with the women. He's post operative, but like, even what the fuck does that mean? Because they say post operative. Does that mean that he doesn't have a penis or does that just mean that he has breast implants? Because those are two very different things. And regardless, he's still a man uh, with a fetish. No less. Let's see. Um, I'm so grateful to hear this verbalized and women like you and Nightmare Nails Speaks talking about it. Thank you. 
Mech said, of course, they only show pretty skinny young boys that were pretty androgynous before they even started transitioning. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because, you know, that, that it's not so cute when it's, you know, like fucking yeah, your 46 year old brother in law who's always been a degenerate and who fucking spends 12 hours a day masturbating the skin off of his penis who suddenly now gets more attention when he wears short shorts and belly shirts with his fucking uh you know beer belly falling onto the ground yeah that, that's not quite as cute as sam lux bopping around with her pigtails you know that doesn't sell so well um, let's see. Ah, uh, sorry. Damn it. Okay. Um, Brittany, oh, shoot. Live chat. Okay, here we go. Damn, why is, can I not get back to, all right. So Emily says, my childhood best friend has been married for 10 years. She and her husband are in their late 30s. Just had a baby boy two years ago. Her husband just came out as trans. Now they made the son non-binary. Yo, it is so sad to me when I see women going along with this. And I'm like, you're going, al that, that's like when women, I remember when I was dating, when I was dating, and I always switch back and forth between like, look, you guys, look at my wall. This, this is my, my future artist right here. She's very, she's a muralist, as you can see. Like, never again are we getting crayons. I was so mad. I was, I like, I like ceremoniously threw out all the crayons. I, so I was like, bring the box, get the trash can. Every crayon goes in the trash can. And they were like, mm. I was like, nope, they're all gone. Gone. You'll have to earn them. <laughs> I was so mad. But, um, no, but she's, like, really funny. She's, like, really hard to stay mad at because she's super cute. Um, no, it's really sad to see women going along with this. And you know that that was one of my peaking moments. I got to go in a few minutes. But one of my peaking moments was because I got thrown out of a domestic uh, abuse Facebook group because there was a woman who I just, whose name, I, I don't know how it clicked for me. But back in, like, few months prior, she had been talking about her husband had, you know, uh, assaulted her in front of her while she was holding their two-year-old son and all this stuff. And then a few months later, she started talking about, you know, oh, my girlfriend, my, or my ex-wife, da, 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 and saying like she, her. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I was like, is this a different relationship than your husband? Who you're talking about? She's like, oh, well, actually, you know, my husband just, or my partner came out as a trans uh, trans woman and so I'm trying to be respectful of her pronouns and I was like are you fucking kidding me and I was like sweetheart um I was like okay so this man you're saying assaulted you in front of your two-year-old son when you were very vulnerable you know I still considered you know two years is barely barely recovered from childbirth it takes at least 18 months to two years to recover from childbirth you're still a new mother you're still basically like neonatal i don't care um he assaulted you and, and but we're, we're worried about his pronouns i was like honey do you realize how dangerous this is because you're also you know misconstruing uh the incidents of violence of you know uh, of women committing violence against their partners. And then that's, you know, we're, we don't allot resources when we don't understand the true ideology, uh, ideology of violence. And also this is part of his control over you, his narcissistic control. You need to break free of that. And also you're endangering all of us by, you know, promoting this trans stuff. When again, we know that uh, it, letting men into these spaces under the guise of being women, that, 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 that threatens all of us. And I was like, you know, I would please like ask that you use his correct pronoun. So and it's going, and of course everyone swooped in was like, you know, how dare you? How dare you? That is a woman just because he has had like, you know, balls his whole life. And just because like, of course he wants to change his identity. He's a fucking degenerate abuser and you're calling him out and he just got charges pressed on him. So now he wants to be the fucking victim. He wants to change his name. Uh, hello. Like, and you're gonna, and everybody's like, you know, there are trans people in here and you need to, I was like, yo, save the fucking, like, I'm not the one. If you think that like all of that kind of like 
boo hoo shit works on me and i was like yo i don't care actually airy i think she's in here i found her because we both got kicked at one of the girls that was in here i don't know if she's still in here we found each other we actually started a facebook group this is like right when i was really peaking um and she's super cool and she like you know comments a lot and and i've like we've just developed kind of like an internet relationship because we both kind of like teamed up on some like in the feminist, I think it was like feminism Facebook group. And we were just talking about like this and we're like, no, like, you know, these aren't, these are men, they're not women and everybody and we, like, and we're like, all right, so what's a woman? Oh, I think it was whether or not men are allowed in the group. And it's like, yeah, but this is for women and feminism's for females. And like, it was just us two versus like, all the other so-called feminists in the group and then obviously we got <laughs> we got kicked out and banned from the group and then I got banned from the uh the um what's it called I got that was like my second warning of why I got banned from the um domestic violence group the first one was because I shared a statistic it's funny it's so similar to Exelanzic story. She shared a um, heart attack statistic about the difference between men and fe males and females, and everyone called her a turf. I shared a statistic about how women, women, females, are at an 800% increased risk of death by homicide, of dying by homicide at the hands of their male partner within the next year after being strangled in the heat of a moment fight. Okay, so if a man puts his hands on you to strangle you, that is the single biggest red flag that you will die from domestic homicide within the next year. And you, your life is in imminent danger and you need to treat it like someone just shot at you and you need to get the fuck out of there. Uh, I thought that was like kind of relevant to share in a, a women's domestic violence thing. It was flagged and wouldn't be allowed to put, be posted because they were like, yeah, I remember like, we, yo, you, I was like, yes, there's somebody in here who agrees and is like, gets it. I was so happy. But like, I was like, um, I was like, yeah, I would think that this is relevant, you know, because I've been choked before. Like when I read that, my, my, I was like, oh, it was like, I saw a ghost. I'm like, oh my God, that's terrifying. This is a life saving statistic that will save the lives of women. And I can't talk about it. Why? Because we're going to hurt men's feelings because we want to be fair and equal. I was like, yo, you got me so fucked. So that was the first straw. And then the second straw was when I was like, yo, don't call these. These are men. Your, your ex is a male. Hence how he was able to impregnate you. Hence how you have a biological child together. Hence how he was able to easily overpower you. Like, no, we're not, I'm not playing this game. Oh, yeah. Oh, Aries says it was why your trans men need feminist video, feminism video. And, and they, they were like, this can't be shown because, you know, we want to be fair. And it was like, this is a part of feminism, though. Like, protecting women from this ideology is feminism. This is protecting women. Let's stop. We're not protecting the, the fetish fantasies of AGP males and, and also, you know, we're not going to encourage the self-harm of sexually traumatized women or women with internalized lesbophobia. We're, we're, we're not doing that. I'm not doing that, okay? I don't, I don't give a fuck. Call me a bigot. Call me a truck. Yo, I've been called everything you could call me. I don't give a fuck, yo. That shit doesn't pay my bills. That shit doesn't make me come. That shit doesn't fucking, you know, take care of my kids. Call me whatever. I don't care. Unfortunately, like, I can afford to not care. Some people are in positions where it's like, but at a certain point, we're going to have to just be willing to take the hit. You know, I've lost a ton of friends. Okay, good. But I think I'm secretly peeking others. So, you know, that that's even better. That's worth it. That's worth cleaning out the closet of all the, like, you know, lames that apparently I used to be cool with. So, all right, let me get back on the, um, all right, um, Mech said, I lost a close friend of almost a decade because her boyfriend started calling himself a woman and she decided my beliefs could harm him and cut all ties over email. Oh, Mech, were you being violent? Were you being violent because you said he, him? A man who you've probably known for a decade as a male. You called him he, and they just couldn't take that violence. Was that what it is, Mac? Were you being violent? Like, 
Like, and, and again, that's why language is so powerful too. This is why, you know, they've got to control us through language because again, it hits a whole lot different when it says, you know, my ex-wife, my ex-wife right hooked me in the face, right? Oh, okay. Like not saying that women can't really hurt you. A man has a thousand percent the punching power of a female. A thousand percent, something like that. Okay. A man hitting a woman full face is a whole lot different. I've hit men in the face, yo. I can't hit. I'm a strong, I'm five, nine. I'm built like some men. Like, look at me, yo. I'm, I'm really like, I, I could actually, I bet you anything. I said, if I transitioned to a man, I'll bet you anything. I'd be one of the trannies that pass because I just have, I have like a, I have like a male build, you know? And it's like, like whatever I have hips, whatever, but it's like, I'm big girl. But at the same time, strength will always give it away. I have strong legs. Women have a roughly equal strength in their lower body, their upper body. There's no contest. There's no contest. So saying that, you know, you got hit by your ex-wife sounds a whole lot different than saying you got fucking jawed by, by a man. And they know that. They know that when you say, oh, well, a woman, you know, she did this or whatever. It's just, it hits different. It hits different. Once That's why we must refuse to be reprogrammed. That's why we even got to stop saying trans woman. That's why it's so important that we say trans identified male, you know. And it was so hard for me in the beginning because it's like I wanted to say... So I still try to use trans woman or trans man. I still try to use the words in the title of the video because a lot of people will clock the video as a turf video if they see like trans identified male, trans identified female in the title. And I want them to just click on it and hopefully they'll be interested enough to stay and watch and it'll at least, you know, plant some seeds. Um, but and also I don't want again, if I keep saying like, you know, uh, <laughs> if I'm like you know, male of trans identifying autogynophilic, you know, porn addicted fetish of total degenerate nature. Yeah, you two is gonna be like, yeah, uh, no, bitch. Like, you're not <laughs> flagged. So, um, you know, I just, again, I, I do want people, and I want, and it's not even about converting people of the cult. I think Vanessa Vokey said this somewhere, and it was so true, and it hit really hard. Somebody was like, oh, well, you know, that sort of language is never going to get through. If you don't start changing how you talk, you know, it's never going to get through to uh, you're going to just be hurting trans people and they're going to just shut down. And she was like, I don't care about converting the trans cult. That's not why I'm here. I'm about communicating to women and letting them know that, hey, those feelings that you've been secretly feeling are, are valid. I'm about, you know, helping families you know, who don't even know where to begin with this, like, you know, give them another uh, alternative perspective, you know? So, yeah, it's not even about, listen, the people who are in the cult are in the cult. They're not going to change, but we can change people on the fence. We can get to people who haven't really sat down and thought about this. That's how I was. I just kind of just agreed with stuff just because I... I it didn't seem like it affected me and until I realized how much it really did. Um, let's see. So you got banned from a domestic violence group because you refused to cater to a wife beater. Yep, sounds right. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So me, an actual uh, victim of domestic violence, refused to use she, her pronouns for a vicious, um, you know, for, for an abuser. And they were like, oh, we have trans people in the group. It was, so it wasn't even like I, I went after a trans-identified male in the group itself. I literally, hold on, let me just double check what time it is really fast. Can someone give me a time check? Uh, oh, 2.47, okay, I can see it. Okay, great. Um, I still have a few more minutes. I got to leave in like a couple minutes here. But yeah, no, I, I literally got kicked out because uh, I refused to call one of the abusers by she here. So I now don't have that resource. I now am, am no longer. And I actually really liked that group. And I got a lot out of that group. But, you know, aside from like a few of those other like bullshit issues, um, I had like, you know, gotten close with the other people in the group and, and it was helpful for me and it was like resources and I was able to vent. So I no longer have that resource. It was more important that we protect the fucking man who beat the shit out of his, um, you know, 23 year old ex-wife and their two-year-old son and is now on some 
you know, like, just let me live out all of my deepest fantasies since I don't have to deal with raising kids anymore. Got them out of the way. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. So, basically, I guess what I want to know from you guys, there's a couple things that I want to talk about. I just want to keep touching base with you guys and going live um, and just talking about stuff. I kind of wanted to come up with some way for like people to call in. So I think I could do it if I can put make like a Zoom number. So would Zoom work for you guys? Like, would you guys be interested in that? I want to have like a little call in uh, show, you know, maybe once every other week or something or once a week where like. You guys could call in and talk about, you know, and give your opinions like on air, you know, or even if you don't want to show your face, we could just leave the camera off. Um, you know, I want to make this as interactive as possible. I know a lot of people can't, uh, aren't comfortable fully, you know, coming out or being, you know, non-anonymous. Um, but I think that the way that we show that there are a lot of people who feel this way you know, it'll, it'll embolden more and more people to be like, to actually start to listen. I think even the first step is some people don't even want to hear the stuff because they're like, oh, it's bigoted. It's this, it's that. But when you start to see that there's other reasonable women, we're not these like cretinous neo-Nazi, just nutcase, you know, man hating, whatever people We're regular women, wise, lesbians, heterosexual women, mothers, child-free women, you know, university students, professionals, stay-at-home moms, women of all walks of life, black women. I love to try to say that this is a white movement. It's not. There's black women in here. There's Spanish women. There's, there's um, uh, Muslim women. All kinds of women are, are tired of this Be because it's ridiculous. There's men here. So I think that the more that they see that there is, you know, a range of people that they identify with, then people will be more comfortable to start interacting with some of these ideas. Um, and we could just brainstorm and talk about other stuff. I got to get going. But um, damn, I really want to read through. It looks like there's a lot of good stuff in the chat. Abel says, I'm working to try to convince those in the cult that their lifestyle was wrong and that they should leave that lifestyle. But I'm also trying to show others the insanity of the cult. Since all of you see the sunshine and rainbow of the cult. Yeah, totally. Um, Life of Beauty case said, Emily, same here. Microsoft Teams works too. Yeah, I could do that. I could do Microsoft Teams. Uh, I'll put out, a, maybe later I'll do a poll and see if people would rather Microsoft Teams or Zoom. Ed Gein was an AGP. I also agreed with the trans community for some time. I'm 20, so in school, I was on the verge of being a full SJW. So glad I began to see the fallacies a lot. Yo, I was literally in... Antifa, anti-fascist. It's funny that I'm like, whoa, that group got like that much national attention. Cause like, I, I'll show you guys pictures. You guys are going to laugh. I like, I used to wear like the full, like black. It's funny because I'm like, so totally like on the other end of the spectrum now, but like, yeah. Um, you know, and it's, it's crazy how much like this sort of tribalism can get to us um, and, and get to regular, otherwise reasonable people. And I hate to say, it, and I hate making, drawing the whole parallel, the whole Nazi thing, but it's why reasonable people, you know, agree to participate in Nazism. That, you know, once you take, there's ways to just mass hypnotize people. We should encourage as many people as possible and it's okay to disagree. I've been strangled by a knife carrying man as well but not anymore. Yeah. Good. Good. I'm so glad to hear that you got out of there. Yo, it's scary. It's scary. Uh, all women in this group worry about domestic violence Buy a handgun, go to the gun ranges, practice end of year. No, uh, th that's what I say too. People get mad when I say that all women should have guns, but you should. And it's not just if other people have guns, it's just the fact it equalizes the imbalance, but you have to learn it. Don't just get a gun and then uh, you don't know what to do because that puts you in danger. The guy could grab it from you, right? You got to be able to act. Once you pull that shit, you be you need to be ready to use it. And you need to be so trained with how to use it, so trained with how to quick do everything with it and how to store it safely so that there's never any accidents. There's way, the, all of when we talk about like accidents and issues and stuff like that, it's for people who just go buy a gun and then that's it. They go to the range once or twice. Now you, you need to commit to it. You need to really learn it, use it, wear it, keep it on you, keep it on you. Um, go to the range, take ongoing education. 
Take it as like you need to just keep being in classes. Online education, they have ranges usually offer classes, safety 101, learning the laws, uh, situational defense, first aid. So all of that kind of stuff. Um, Discord, I don't, you guys, I don't understand Discord. Yo, people have been inviting me to Discord so many times. I don't understand how to use it. I'm just like, I don't know. Um, so I'm going to have to skip Discord. <laughs> Maybe if I can figure it out, but I think like Zoom or something like that. Uh, most men are not complete psychopaths, but it's a pretty serious issue that finding one of the few is the last thing you'll ever do. Yeah, it's scary. That's scary. True, the target needs to be people vulnerable to the gaslighting of the cult. The mentally ill will not understand a logical position. Well, and also and they have, and, and here's, you got to understand, like people like Jammy Dodger and none of those people are like Sam Lux. And you could see, you can tell that they even see like, the problems with their position, but they have a financial incentive to continue to keep their position. They have a financial incentive. So obviously they're not, they're, you know, there's no way. And then some other people have a social incentive. All of their friends are, we saw with Abel, you know, as soon as they saw that he was um, involved with the police in any sort of way through his academy training and stuff like that and his work, they like dropped him. A lot of people will will just choose having friendship and a, and a friend group over the truth, you know, and that's just what it is. Not everybody's strong enough to go against the herd and to go off and, you know, go restart and be on their own. Um, so anyway, all right, guys, I got to get going. I got to go pick up my kids. So, yeah, I, the reason I actually just did this... Um, I'm from the hood. We don't fear guns as much. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> In the hood is where I fear guns because I know everybody's strapped. Everybody's strapped. Uh, at least fucking where we... I mean, I'm in Philadelphia. Philadelphia's gun violence is out of fucking control. But the hood is where I'm actually more concerned just because I know everyone has guns. And not only does everyone have guns, they have shitty guns. They have guns that have been involved in crimes and they have guns that fucking they don't know how to use properly. They don't know how to, that are not properly clean, maintained or stored. And people who are skittish, who also know that everyone else has guns. And so everyone's like, it's just skittish. So <laughs> yeah, I know. But um, it should be child considered child abuse if you want to chemically castrate and mutilate your minor child. Absolutely. 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 All right, guys, I got to go. I'm going to go back and read through all these comments later. Thanks for hanging out with me. I just kind of wanted to try this out. This was just meant to be like a short thing. I just wanted to try this out. I'm going to try to do this more. Um, I didn't get as much folding done as I wanted, but um, isn't that cute? That's like her little area. The room is actually nice. I would show it to you guys. I know it, like, it probably looks like I'm like living in a crack house based on the back wall. I promise you the room's nice. <laughs> Um, but all right, guys, well, I appreciate you. Um, I'm going to put up a poll with how to do like the call in thing and just let me know what kind of things you want to talk about. And, um, I don't know, let's, I want this, I want there to be an opportunity for there to be like a forum, a conversation. So, all right, guys, thank you. I really appreciate all your support. Thanks so much, guys. Talk to you soon. Okay. Please stay in touch.